I'm going to show you how to create a hero banner that might be suitable for a web design or a web agency where they want to show off who they are and maybe their website and have a, like a snappy headline on the screen as well. This is really simple and easy to do and we're going to do it right now. We're going to start off with a container and it's just going to be a column vertical container. Now I'm going to leave it as a boxed because the wording I'm going to pop in here isn't going to stretch across the full width. And I kind of do want to control a little bit with how wide the words will be. So I'm going to just set that as 1140. Now you will always wonder why do I do that? Because it defaults to 1140. Force of habit, I like to just enter in the values. It's the way I like to roll. And I'm going to zero out the margin and padding. Now I am going to go and give this a bit of height. I'm going to go to VH and I'm going to go with something like 75. I may modify this later on. But it's not a bad idea to pop something in. To be honest, I will get rid of that once I add in my content because that is going to kind of determine the size of the container. And then I'm going to go to the style and I'm going to give this a bit of background color. Now I'm just going to pop in this color here. This color I've picked up from an image that I'm going to use. And I know it's not the nicest color, it's murky. But when I get to the end, I'm going to show you how would this have looked with a popping like neon color. But the flexibility of what I'm building here means that you could change the color at any time. So this is the reason I'm building it in this way and it will make sense in a moment. Then what I'm gonna do is go to my background overlay and I'm gonna add in a image that's gonna sit on the right hand side. Let's go over here and you will now see that I've got this image here. Well, let me just show you something. Here's the image that I'm gonna be using. It's an image which has uh, some websites. There's about seven, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's seven websites there. There's a bit of space in between and around them. And the idea is, is that they're going to sit on the right hand side so that you can see them, but they're not like full on in your face. And later on in the website, you might want to pop them up as separate images or put them on a portfolio or a case study page. But we have a lot of empty space here because I want the background color to also be very dominant. I just I don't want to fill everything up with loads of busy images. Uh, what? Ooh, let me go back to that. We also have over here is the person of interest. Now, both of these images are 1920 by 1080 and they've been converted into WebP. What I also have are copies. This image is 1920 by 1080p and this image here is 500 by 281. And this image here is also 500 by 281. How did I do that? Really simple. When you drag these two images in, drag in copies, and then what you do is you go over to the image. I'll do it on this one. You hit the edit image, you go to scale, and I change that to be 500. So if you do that, you can see it's gone to 500 to 281. Let's undo that. So the reason I've done that is so that I've got copies of the images for the mobile, because it's very important to have appropriate sized images if you care about your page speed insights. So let's go and pick this image over here and that is now added. I'm going to set this to be a uh, center right. So it's over on the right. I'm going to say no repeat and I'm going to set the size to be contain. The reason why I'm going for container, let me just move that, is that if you go for cover, it fills up a lot more estate and also you lose a bit at the bottom and the top. Whereas if I go for contain, you get to see all of the image. I know you can't see it all over here. If I just move my face for a moment, you can see the dog now at the moment, which you would completely miss out on if I went for a cover, unless that's the kind of look you want to go for. OK, cool. Now into this container, I am going to go and drop in uh, two headers and an image. Header one, header two. And we'll go and drop in an image as well. I know, I know. Stay with me on this, OK? Let's go and change our image to be the big lady at the moment, so the bigger version of the image, and you can see what we've got going on there. Let's then go over to our text. I'm going to change that to say web, and I've changed the second one to say designer. Designer, I can't spell designer like that. Now, before we continue, I just want to reflect on something that I slightly didn't mention clearly. That background image has a 0.5 opacity. If I go and do one, depending on the person you have in front, it's going to start fighting. And if my words were white, they're going to kind of start to overlap with some of the white you have here. And what we tend to do is we start to put like um, another overlay on top or another image on top. And we, you know, make sure it's a little bit transparent. 
What I'm going to do though to make things clearer is drop the opacity of that background overlay to be 0.4 like that. So the images are there but they're not full on in your face almost in a way. You can still read them. You know, it's still legible, I like to think. So you still get some idea of some of the websites that have been built. Okay, let's now go and change our text. I'm going to centralize the text over there. I'm now going to pop this to be in white. I'm only going to do it for the top one and then I'm going to duplicate the format. We go to our typography. I'm not going to use my custom loaded railway. I'm just going to use Vedana for now and I'm going to set the weight to be 800. What you should be doing is using a custom loaded font for page speed optimization. OK, make sure it's been loaded through. Make sure you check out our video on ensuring your web fonts are loaded. So please make sure you do that. I'm also going to make this be an uppercase like that. Now I'm just going to for simplicity copy that and paste it over there just so we have both of them are styled in that particular way. What we need to do is set the size because they are going to sit behind our female web designer. OK, but I want the words to be very big. I want the web to be really big and the designer to be big, but to fit within the parameters of the web. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pop in a clamp calculation into the typography for the for the uh, both of those. Let's first decide on the size. We're going to go to typography. I'm going to set this to be REM and I'm going to type in 20. 20 isn't actually that bad, but I'm going to go with, say, 22. Ooh, I think I'll go with 25. No, we'll go with 22. I'm going to go with 22 for that. OK, then what I'm going to do is go over to the mobile. How big do I want it to be on the mobile? So I'm now going to go to 378 for my size. Go to my typography and I'm going to go with a 10. Way too big. What about if we went with an 8.5 seems to me to work really, really well there. So we're going to go with a, let me get this right, 22 and 8.5. Now I'm going to go use my clamp calculation that you can see. The link is in the video description that you can go and pop in your values. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to use right now. We're using Elementor, so we're going to leave the root HTML as a 16. We're going to go over here and I'm going to say that the smallest size kicks in when you get to like 380 is the minimum size. Um, in fact, it could go smaller than that. And the maximum size of 22, the moment you hit, uh, let me get this in, 1100, that's it. It will not go greater than 22. So we're going to go over here to where it says pixel. I'm going to change that to say REM. I'm going to change that to say REM. I'm going to type in 22 and 8.5. It's basically saying, don't go smaller than 8.5, but don't go bigger than 22 when you get to that maximum threshold. You then copy over the formula, go back over to the page, uh, which is over here. Sorry. Go back to the page, go and click the big header, click typography, go to where it currently says REM. In fact, can I just remind you, make sure if you have entered in any values to test it, you also remove them. Otherwise, um, the clamp won't work properly. Go back to the desktop typography says REM, go and hit the pencil and then paste in the formula. Now, in the formula, you must get rid of the curly bracket and the semicolon at the end. And at the very start, before the word clamp, get rid of everything else. And look, the minute you do that, that is what happens. If we were to go to the tablet, you can see the size shrinks. You go to the mobile, it shrinks a bit more. And I'll just show you that looks fine as a 378. That's all looking pretty good. Now let's go and do it for the small one as well. So now we're going to decide on what our size is. So I'm going to stick this in as an REM and I'm now going to increase it until I get to how big I want it to be. So we are going to go with a 9.3 on the uh, desktop. Let's go and pop in 9.3 over there. Go back over here. I'm on the wrong one. There we go. Let's go to the mobile. And now I'm going to shrink this down to also fit the width of what we want. Put that onto 378. And again, just adjust that. I think we can go with 3.6. Great. So now I'm going to get rid of those values. Let's get rid of that one as well. Go back over to the calculator. Type in 3.6. So we have 3.6 to 9.3. Go to the pencil. Drop in the formula. Get rid of the curly bracket and the semicolon. And of course, get rid of the everything before the word clamp, if I can paste it properly. I can't paste it, can I? There we go. Get rid of everything before the word clamp. So now we've got web designer and designer like that. Now let's start 
to affect the layout and how this actually looks. We're going to have to refine it for the mobile, but it ain't that difficult. Let's go to our parent container first. I'm going to ensure that the items are aligned in the center and everything is justified to go to the end. The reason I've done that is that now our person of interest is at the bottom. If it wasn't, it was kind of like that. She's floating above the top, but I want it to be at the bottom. Don't worry about her positioning just yet because we will modify that. What I'm going to do is put all the words behind her. Let's just double check the navigator as to what we have over here. Oh, I've just realized my image is not on full resolution. There we go. And that should actually be 100%. Sorry. Let me just set the width of that. Uh, the image should be 100%. If you don't do that, you might notice the image size is not correct. Let's go back over to our first heading. We go to advanced. We go down to where it is position and we go and click absolute. And I'm also going to then say I want it to be at the bottom. And there you go. It's now at the bottom. Let's go do the same to the other heading. We go to advanced. We go to absolute and I want it to be at the bottom. It's easier to start from the bottom and add in bottom margin, whereas you do it from the top. You it, it can work, but sometimes it's better. Trust me, it's better to start from the bottom. Right. What we're now going to do on the first heading is it's gone to the left. And if you click this, it goes to the right. But how do you get it in the center? This is a bit of a funny one. OK, you go and pick VW and you leave it as zero and it automatically goes to the center. So I go to the heading now, right? Look, it's on the left. It could be on the right. I want it to be in the center. OK, fine. You go and change the horizontal orientation offset to be set as VW and zero pops it in the center. Because if you start to move it to centralize it, you're forever going to have to tweak that for the tablet, for the mobile, and it might not be dead on. And it's always going to bug you a little bit. That is now centered proper, prim and proper, good and done and dusted. Right. Now we're going to go to that top heading. And I'm now, instead of using this again, vertical orientation, I'm going to control it by a um, messing around with my values here. So I am going to go in and add in a positive value until I get to 180. Now I'm going to make a note of that 180. In fact, I'm going to go over to my clamp calculator. I'm going to just go down to this second one just because it's in pixel and I'm going to type in 180. You are going to be surprised at what we do here in a moment, right? So 180 pixel for the mobile. Let's just go over here. How high do I want it to be? Now, it's slightly difficult to do that here because we have all of our items and basically the image is pushing everything down as well. And so what we're going to do first, let's just adjust our image. I'm going to go and increase the height of this to be something like, uh, in fact, we won't go that tall. We'll go with about 300 and then I'm going to change it to be a cover. So there we have our image. I'm then going to go back into desktop and get rid of my minimum height. It's, it's basically not needed. OK, when I go to the mobile now, because it because of that 75 that was um, coming from the desktop, it was doing that. I get rid of that. I can now see what my height actually is. So I've got my person, my hero banner. It's not a full screen that because of the content we got in there. Let me just pop that to be 378. Sorry, I keep forgetting to do that. We got our wording. Now, 180 is too tall for that. So we're going to now drop it down and I'm going to go for 90. Now, I'm going to get rid of that value. OK, this is important. Once you've worked out your value, clear it out. Go to your desktop, clear that out as well. OK, make sure there's no value in there. We go back to the clamp calculator and we go and type in 90 here. The formula has already adjusted to be REM, but I'm working with pixel 90 to 180. We then copy this. We go over to our page and in the bottom, we change this to now be pencil. And in the bottom one, make sure it's not linked. We paste in that formula. I get rid of the clamp calculation. No, the uh, curly bracket and the semicolon. Don't get rid of the clamp calculation. That would be a very bad move. I mean, I get rid of, uh, rid of everything in front of the word clamp like that. So you can see the word has moved up. And when we get to the mobile, it is also moved up because look, the pencil is activated. If when one, if you go in out of curiosity and you don't see it, just make sure you've hit the pencil and it feeds it through. OK, so there we go. We got the web and we've got that. I'm now going to go to my image and I'm going to say, make my image a Z index be a two. And now the words are behind 
and that will be the same on the mobile as well. Look how cool that looks. Right, let's now do it for the bottom one as well. Let's just zero out. Let's add in a bit of bottom margin. We'll go to about, I think 60 is more than enough. That's good. Let's then go to the mobile and we'll do the same there again. Let's just push this up. And I think 30 is quite nice, isn't it? The numbers are kind of half and half of one another. Right, let's just go over here. Let's do 30 and let's do 60 there. We then copy the formula. We're making this responsive from desktop to mobile. And, and I love to do stuff like this. Let's make sure it's all zeroed out. You know, clear the value, go to the desktop, go and hit the pencil, make sure it's not linked, hit paste, get rid of the curly bracket and the semicolon, and then get rid of everything in front of the word clamp like that. And when you go to the mobile, again, look, it's not come over. So just make sure you hit the pencil and it is now there. So if I now go to 378, you can see it's looking okay. You go to desktop, it's looking okay. You go to the tablet, it's looking okay. But we're not done yet. We're going to do one more thing. We're going to duplicate that designer heading. We are then going to go to the advanced tab. And the image, I think I had a Z index of two. So I'm going to make this be a three. So the wording is in exactly the right spot because it's in tune with the other heading because we just duplicated it. But what we're going to do is go to the style and make it be a little bit transparent, like something like that. And if we now just hit update and we do this, we now have a different looking hero banner that you could use however you want. I mean, you could put a text editor over here in the top. Give it like, make it look like a circle with border radius and a bit of padding. And you might say web prices from $1,000, SEO, page speed optimization from $500. You could give someone a bit of info. Also, there is no call to action button. Don't worry about that because we've only used up so much estate. Yeah. So you've still got about 25, 30, well, 20 odd of the VH down here. So you could start another container that now has a bit more detail with a call to action button or something else. But this is a pretty stylish looking hero banner. It's simple. You can see the websites. I know there's a bit of opacity. You can see who they are and you can see they're a web designer, but you can change the wording. Remember, each one of these is a separate component. So if you decide, oh, I'm going to change the word web to be web s or something like that. You can do, you can put the word snap, you can put whatever you want. You could put your company name in, just size it accordingly. And remember I said to you about the background color. Let me now show you what would happen because the overlay is a transparent background. We now go here and I'm going to just copy this color so I don't lose it. Let's go and make this be a bit of a like, you know, a flash color like that. Look at that. It's, it's jumping out at you, isn't it? Maybe too much, but can you see how you can still make out the images, the wording? I don't know about you, but it's a brilliant way of being different. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit. Do it right, play the game, win it life. Have no shame, there's no time. Feel the pain, let the grind. I could change in my mind. Pick a lane, commit and climb. The only way to win it life. I never miss that.